Here's a second video about exponent laws. And for the exponent laws, we know, I think, already how most of them go. But they're here on the screen. So we've got our multiplication. So if we have anything with the same base, like a cubed times a to the fifth, a cubed would be 1, 2, 3 a's, a to the fifth would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 a's. Together, we would count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is generally true, that if you have anything to any exponent, and it's the same base to a different exponent, and you multiply those two terms together, then it's the same as adding those two exponents. Similarly, for division, if a to the sixth is six a's on top, a, to a squared is two a's on the bottom, cancel out pair and pair, we're left with four a's on the top, which is the same as six minus two. So six a's minus two a's. That's also generally true. If you have the same base, each to an exponent, and you divide them, it's the same as subtracting those two exponents, keeping the same base. Our power law was if you have an exponent of an exponent, then this is the whole base. So if a squared is the base, that's a squared, that's a squared, that's a squared, and that's a squared. Then we know that this one, two, three, four instances of that same base we could write as an exponent, which we just did as a four there. So if there's eight a's overall, which is the same as a to the two times four. So if you have exponent of an exponent, you end up multiplying those exponents. Power of a product goes by some different names, but here we're basically using the distributive property. So a squared b is, well, the whole base, right? That whole thing is the base. And if this whole thing is the base, there's one, two, three of them if we cube it. But all together, there's one, two, three, four, five, six a's and one, two, three b's. That's the same as if we took our exponent on the outside and distributed it to each term on each, sorry, each part of the term on the inside. So a squared times three, so a to the two times three, or a to the six, which is what we ended up with. And b, which is to the one, if there's no exponent, it's to the one. So the one times three, which is three. And in the end, we did end up with three b's. If you have a quotient and there's a power on that quotient, like here, a over b cubed, all to the fifth power. That's like a to the fifth, and b to the three times five, or b to the 15. So a to the fifth on top, and b to the 15 on the bottom. You could write it the same way as before. Our base, a over b cubed, happens one, two, three, four, five times. While that happens, we've got three, six, nine, 12, 15 b's, and one, two, three, four, five a's. So again, this is always true that we can use that distributive nature to apply the exponent to everything that was in the brackets. So if we tried an example here like expand 3a squared cubed, we could say that that's 3a squared times 3a squared times 3a squared. Or we could say we'll take this 3 and apply it to the 3 and apply it to the a. So that's the same as 3 to the 1, there's 1, 3 before, times 3, and a to the 2 times 3. There were two a's before, times 3. And that's the same as 3 cubed a to the 6th power. If it asks you to expand, it wants a version like that, but this has the same meaning. Here we have, if we have what's the base in this term here? So this term, 3 times b over x cubed. The base is what gets the exponent applied to it, which is the b and the x. So in this case, the base is b over x. That's our base. b over x cubed means we have it appearing three times. The 3 did not get cubed. So this is the same as 3b cubed over, I could write the 3 outside here if it makes you more comfortable, over x cubed. So for our exponent laws, I think you've practiced them. If not, we have some more coming up in a future video where we'll practice them too.